Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the counterfeit issue a lot of you have been asking and here's the update. The update is they are getting better each month. They are getting better and they are increasing. The Dowson guy has a large factory that he purchased, a large printing factory. And he has a tour of that on his YouTube channel. It's pretty impressive. He probably threw down 100K, which is what, just two lotuses, right? And he now is printing them like, like paper, I guess, which they are. Cardboard stock. So there are printers in Canada and printers in the US, printers in Brazil. They obviously, when you present a business model that works, although it's ethically bad and it is illegal, I would assume it's illegal in these places, uh, it's definitely illegal in the US. Then as long as there's money to be made, there will, people be, there will be people trying to make better counterfeits. Now counterfeits, the danger of counterfeits in my opinion, in my personal experience and how it's affected me is not the fact that I can't identify them. No, counterfeits are relatively easy to identify. They pass the bend test, they pass the light test, but they just feel off. Like if you played with magic cards, I've played with magic cards without sleeves growing up and that's how I play it. So I feel magic cards or when, if you have a large collection and you are sorting magic cards, even having a four hour sorting session, you can identify, whoa, this card's a little off uh, by how it feels. Uh, it does, they do look very good in terms of scans. Uh, but higher resolution scans like 600 DPI, they start looking not as high quality. So in sleeve, they're fine. The reason and how, how it's affecting my behavior is I don't trade anymore at all. I buy, but when I'm buying stuff, I try to buy the hollow foil stamp. Let me explain the hollow foil stamp. Yes, if they really wanted to, I'm sure they could copy it. But why would they want to? When the Conflux Noble Hierarch is more tradable and more valuable than the modern master version. Why would they go the extra distance to make, you know, to have a extra element which they could make mistakes on, an extra element of cost? They would not. I know a lot of people are saying that they have good counterfeits that have hollow foils, like little, this little stamp, but no, that doesn't make any sense. And I can tell you, I've never seen one. I've never heard of a really, I've never seen a good scan of one unless it was a real card people were passing as fake. Because why would they do that? Like, why would they go the additional step of printing a modern, or a legacy masters force of will when they can just make the regular force of will and not deal with the stamp and not deal with the additional cost, and not deal with the additional possibility of being caught or being less than less than catchable like the people buying these stuff they're selling them they're into mtg finance they say that they're going to buy it for their proxy deck but then they're in the mtg finance reddit right like hmm that's interesting you have two very interesting uh interest in magic one you like selling stuff to make money and two you like counterfeit cards put one and one together and what do you get you get a counterfeit seller congrats anyway my personal feeling is I don't trade for anything that is, so if a noble, if a Liliana the Veil comes out, this is a very good example. I already don't have any regular copies. I just have foil copies and the same with foils. Why would they do foils when it just takes more time and more money when they can just generate infinite amount of revenue pretty much from just doing a regular Liliana, right? Plus the buyer base will be less, uh, knowledgeable. If someone's going to buy a foil lily, that's a different type of buyer than someone who's going to buy a lily for their modern deck. Anyway, the, the summary I have is it has affected my trading behavior quite a bit. Um, it has affected it for many, many years, ever since I found out about it. No, they are not undetectable. No, the average magic player who's handle magic cards will be it. Well, yes, the ma average magic player who handles magic cards will be able to identify they are fake. It's just like, why would you deal with the stress, right? I'm not in it to like be a, a gem broker or like whatever, right? I just want to have fun. So the problem I have is if I'm trading for trading to someone and they don't know it's a fake, it feels bad to tell them it's a fake. Now, if they do know it's a fake, 
that's even worse, right? Like the dude is just trading fakes across the store. And we had that happen in Houston local and they called me in, I came in, I somehow I got attributed like I'm an expert, but like you don't need to be an expert. Like you can just, they smell differently because the problem, the, the, here's, here's the thing. If the card is an underground C, it's been around for 20 years, right? It's gonna not have a strong of a smell as a card that you just printed out and that's more plasticky. So at the very end of the day, a lot of, I know when people say I'm buying counterfeits for my proxy, I'm buying from my proxy, I see those same people trade them away. And I can identify them because they're trading them away as soon as they get them. And that the smell is still even, I guess they sleeve it up and then that keeps the smell. Because if you had an underground city 20 years ago, you didn't know it was valuable, right? And we didn't really have like that great of sleeves. The options for sleeves were just penny sleeves. I remember like one dude coming in and he had penny sleeves and everyone made fun of him. He's like, oh, that's not how magic is played, penny sleeves. But then the sleeve market has just gone like crazy. So that was probably, that's actually probably the big difference now is people, if they have a fake underground C, they will double sleeve it. And then that keeps, you know, the smell intact. As opposed to 20 years ago, like underground C, no one sleeve, they just kitchen tabled it. So my personal opinion on counterfeits is I don't want to deal with them at all. I don't want to trade for things that can be counterfeits because it feels bad either way. If the guy knows it or if the guy does not know it, I don't know which, which is worse. Um, and at the end of the day, uh, trade with people you trust, buy from stores you trust that have guarantees. If a deal is too good to be true, it is too good to be true. Those type of deals do not exist anymore in a digital age where uh, you can find some dude on Craigslist and he has a play set of every single dual land and all he wants is a, like some $500, right? Likely that's gonna be fake. Uh, I saw, remember we saw that Craigslist ad, it was like $50,000 of magic cards for like $1,500. And you're just looking at the cards and they just come off, it's almost like he bought two play sets of every fake magic card on the list. And if that's good, I mean, as long as there's profit to be made, people will make counterfeit cards. It, it's just that simple. And the profit margins are enormous, right? If you trick somebody into buying that $50,000, and, and it was that, that dude, it was that dude who went to Walmart, the first Walmart rejected him. He went to another Walmart, that Walmart rejected him. Then he got a check at another, like a payday loan vendor, which is terrible. And because they don't care, they're like, okay, fine, just give us some money, we'll give you the uh, cashier check. And then only when he talked to his wife did he realize he was being scammed because he wanted so badly to get $50,000 of magic cards for $1,500. Human nature. You know, I, I totally get the fact that counterfeits are scary, counterfeits are like, but if you only trade with friends, you only buy from stores that you know are legitimate, then what do you have to be afraid of, right? Because even if there is a counterfeit, it will be corrected instantly. As long as a person that you traded for or bought the card from has any decent sense of reputation, then yeah, a lot of people selling counterfeits, they don't even play magic. 100%, you know, it's when people tell me I, I want to buy a counterfeit from my proxy deck, but I need like eight sets of them, it's like, what? <laughs> like how many cubes do you need to build? Like, why do you need eight sets of them? Uh, it, it's it's astounding some of the uh, Facebook. Maybe one day I'll go through my Facebook messages and show you just the ridiculous stuff people talk about counterfeits with me about. And it's just like, uh, get out of here. Anyways, bye guys.